Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and welcome back to World of Waves 2. So, last part, we finished a war with the Germans. They basically just refused to give us battle for an entire turn. And then a couple turns later they decided to surrender. Um, when I was asked, what do you want to do about continuing the war? And I said, you know, we can get better terms if we keep fighting for a few more months. And they said, nah. Our diplomatic corps is still going to get peace. Screw what I want. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing that happened. So, this part we are potentially gearing up for a war... Well, sort of starting to gear up for a war against either the British, the Japanese, or the Italians. End of last part, I realized we have quite a bit of a larger budget than the British do. Which is good for us, of course. So that's something we're going to have to take into account. Because um, that is very useful, in fact. Okay, so I can send the Bane Bridges through for a fairly minor refit just to give them the increased elevation because it has literally no weight cost and it gives them an extra thousand yards of range. Which... Considering that it's only useful against fighting other destroyers, it's still useful, kind of. Um, out of curiosity, will would the game let me do this? Just not that I'm going to. I'm just curious if the game will let me do that. And the answer looks like it would be yes. So if I could ever find a way to get the weight under control it might actually be possible to do that but there is no way to get the weight under control even a massive rebuild would only allow me to get you to orange caliber and then you run into issues with getting a rate of fire penalty because heavy crowding on the center line because you're only a 500 ton destroyer i can't do much with you Uh, no. Sorry, Japan. We are potentially looking at a war starting with you, so I'm not going to give you anything. Speaking of war with you, we're going to go ahead and send the three Wyomings that have finished their reconstruction um, with Director Secondaries, right? Yes. Um, to Southeast Asia. And Parliament has decided to reduce my, my naval budget. Uh, send a strong squadron. An improved model of the Curtis Seagull. Literally no reason not to take it. It's a little bit faster, it got a little bit more range. A little bit faster cruising speed. Um, the Brewster, however, we have... Well, no, screw it. I'll let the Brewster stay in service. We're going to high tensions the Japanese. I think we're going to go over with the Japanese. Uh, the Houstons need a refit. Or director secondaries. Why are you can? Oh, I guess technically I still don't have turreted secondaries on for uh for armored cruisers, but we're just gonna ignore that. You only have a hundred rounds. That is not a lot. Why do I only? Why did I only give you a hundred rounds? Normally I aim for 150. It's overkill, but typically I aim for 150. But I guess I'm just going to keep you at 100 because I can't be bothered to change that right now. I need you guys ready for a potential war with the Japanese in the near-ish future. So four months for the Houstons to get their rebuild real quick. Um, 
For some reason, I thought I saw a work up here. Our destroyer is still two months out. Uh, we should not be limited in our national security by any restrictions imposed on us. And we made an unexpected advancement in turrets and gun mounting for double gun mounts on light cruisers and medium AA. That's nice. Houston. Rebuild. You guys were in the South Pacific. Now, actually... The two in the South Pacific, I might, might be the key word here. Send up into Northeast Asia with a squadron of other ships. Uh, to blockade Northeast Asia, potentially. We'll see. It just, it kind of depends on a number of factors. But I think I might do that. Or maybe I'll just wait until we basically... Well, I know that they're going to probably move a lot of their ships out of Northeast Asia to go to Southeast Asia if... Well, not if. When the war begins. So... I shouldn't have to send too much stuff there. And blockading Japan will just result in the war ending much faster. There we go, our first Warrington. So, uh, I can't give you Central Range Finder. Uh, well, actually I can if I drop down your secondary complement to four instead of six. Which is still an admirable amount. Also, I can give you some torpedoes, or not torpedoes, mines. I don't know how useful that really is, though, all things considered, to be honest. I've never really paid attention to mines. I assume they just deploy them automatically. Um, but I've never really messed around with it, to be honest. Oh wait, I have medium AA. We'll do that. So, uh, the Warringtons just finished their entering of service. Technically, we haven't even finished their workup yet. But, uh, change of plans. Also, Minneapolis's. I'm. I imagine the game won't let me actually do this if I wanted to. Can I? I'd have to drop you down to five-inch turrets to be able to give you dual mounts. And apparently, because they are less than five inches or less than nine inches, I will suffer a rate of fire penalty. So I still need to research something else to not suffer a rate of fire eh rate of fire penalty for less than nine inch dual mounts new docks completed south carolina eh, south carolina finished her reconstruction along with the alabama and indiana uh no italy even better 14 inch gun game i literally just finished with the damn wyoming's and Grumman has a new floatplane scout for us. And it's not that good. They give it a heavy bomb, which it will not utilize ever. And it loses speed. It gains quite a bit of range, though. And it is a scout. That range is useful. You know what? We'll take it, I guess. Okay. Wyoming's. If I give you those better 14 inch guns, it's another six months. We still have a ways out until the war begins as things currently stand. Um, I should probably give you a compliment of medium AA. Nah, I'll just give you full medium AA, rather than any light. I don't know if that's actually a good idea. I don't know. I've never really messed around too much, dealing with trying to 
figure out what the best sort of ratio is of medium guns to light guns for AA. Because I'm sure there probably is some sort of ratio that is good and maybe not perfect, but is uh, reliable is probably the best way to describe it. But I don't know what that is. I do not care enough. We're going to go ahead and send the Wyomings back for more rebuilds. Because now they could be able to pen almost 18 inches of belt armor at 5,000 yards. Um, and they also gained about 3,000 yards of range because magic. I guess just because they're better quality. That somehow allows them to have more range as well. I don't know the logic for that, but whatever. It's still useful. So... Back to the shipyards with you guys. Also, the Kentuckys will now get a single refit to go all the way up to quality one. And director secondaries and medium AA. Um, okay, can't quite do that. Otherwise you run into issues. So, that's fine. Whatever. Six months for the Kentuckys. Let's send them in for a refit. Uh, continue upgrading our docks. And our first CVL, the Ohio, has finished her reconstruction. And no Italy. So there is our first ever CVL. It's the Montana, well it's the Ohio, it's a Montana class, it's been through a refit and I didn't bother redrawing the superstructure or anything to give it an actual flight deck, so uh, yeah. But now I can switch that back to high for a shipboard aircraft operation. And uh, just gonna tell you to auto add. And the Illinois, New Jersey, and Montana have all now joined. President floats the idea of a shooting competition. Excellent idea. And the Brooklyn one. Where the hell's the Brooklyn? Uh, the Brooklyn is a Brooklyn class. Should have known. Oh, I kind of screwed up and actually did not do all the Warringtons, at least not the new ones, so uh, send those for their rebuilds as well. Oopsie daisy, that's my fault. Uh, oh, the Ohio's probably already got some, right? Yes, the Ohio already has some. I'm like, why does it have ASW capability? Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> It already got some of its planes that it's supposed to get, so that's why. Um, oh. Do you have... I completely forgot to actually check on this. The Bismarck Archipelago does not have any uh, batteries, so let's give it some. But I think everything else already has... Uh, land, uh, coastal batteries, so we'll leave all that as is. And, you know, yeah, I can't build any bigger air bases right now. Now, uh, uh, this number here for training capacity for a carrier air crew, I believe that is some sort of ratio of your max number of aircraft you can have, period. So upgrading your air bases will increase this number by some degree. It is then decreased to some degree if you have elite pilot training, I believe, is my understanding. So right now with these four CVLs, the authorized aircraft and carrier-capable units is 40, which is a little less than half of our total 
training capacity for carrier air crews. Uh, if each of these had their full complement of 20, they would almost be filling this, and I'd have to build more air bases to be able to increase this value. Which, you know what, I got tons of cash. We're going to go ahead and say screw it. We're going to splurge. We're going to build air bases everywhere. Some of them may not get upgrades in the future, of course, but we're still going to build them everywhere. Just to pump those numbers up. Basically. Even useless places like Alaska. Where it actually is legitimately useless. Uh, go for the win. Superimposed X mounts on light cruisers. Wonderful. Uh, you need to go for a rebuild. Uh, I don't think anything else needs rebuilt, right? I think everything's good. Yeah, sure. Copy. Sure. Enhanced warhead explosives for torpedoes to do more damage, better submarine reliability, and better 12-inch guns, which are useful for the New Mexicos. And the Martin Mars is finally ready for service after a delay. So you are going to go from 22,000 as max range and 13.2 at 5,000 yards to 14 with a max range of 24. Still useful. Give you director firing secondaries. Replace all your light AA with medium AA, at least as much as possible. Uh, keep that as is, yeah, 3.5 inches, that's fine. Yep. Go ahead and upgrade our New Mexico's six months for that, and they are both in the South Pacific. Now that number was at 88 the last time I looked at it. Holy crap. Sudden slump in the economies. Uh, social reforms. Social reforms pass. And double reduction gears for weight savings on machinery, thank you. And we are close to mastering improved armor testing. And the North American company has a new float plane scout. It's crap, so we're not going to accept it. The number is still at 88. Okay, I thought it went up as a result of having more um, air bases. It's still fine, you know, we still have uses for all those air bases, but it's not as useful as I thought it was because apparently I misunderstood how that system works. Again, not a big deal. Uh, we should build railroads to increase the long-term prosperity. Let's see, so one Wyoming is finished. Go ahead. Southeast Asia. The Kentuckys, I think, will stay in the Caribbean for now. Actually, you know what? No. You stay in the Caribbean. We're going to send the Kentuckys to Southeast Asia. You know, send our not quite biggest baddest dreadnoughts there. Um, the Indianas, I think, I'm going to send to the Northeast, uh, to Northeast Asia uh, once the war breaks out.
And now I can do CV conversions. Um, am I over my limit anywhere? Just make sure. No? Okay, wonderful. Uh, these two actually are going to go to the South Pacific. The Constitutions! I kind of forgot about you guys. I really did. Um, two of you go to Southeast Asia. Two of you go to South Pacific for now. The two in the South Pacific, I think, will end up joining the Indianas. Which, you know what? I'm going to send you guys, I think, to the Central Pacific. So, change of plans. You guys go to Central Pacific. What's my base capacity in the Central Pacific? 100. Uh, okay, we may not quite be able to do that. I suppose we'll see. We got info on a Japanese flying boat and a Japanese armored cruiser with most of its guns in the rear which is an interesting design decision because that does mean if it follows me it does not have as much firepower as if I chase it. Unexpected advances in fire control and some fleet tactic stuff. You said unexpected advancements in fire control, but you didn't actually give me anything. Thanks, game. <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly what I look forward to. Uh, you go to the Caribbean. Oklahoma's. You know what? Honestly, I know I gave you guys a rebuild a couple years ago because, you know, I kind of thought maybe I have a use for you. Actually, I think about it. Yes, I do. The plan was, I think, to go and give you a refit like this, right? I believe that was actually my plan indeed. Not quite 20. Uh, yes, I want it to be a CVL. There. Nothing on the secondaries. That needs at least 130 so the game doesn't complain. Ship is overweight. Give you a speed focus. It helps a little bit, but not quite enough still. Yeah, you know, with the Oklahomas, I'm just going to say screw it. Scrap them. They're expensive. They're not particularly useful. I can't rebuild them because they're too small of displacement. Just screw them. Get rid of them. Uh, sure. We'll use the Arizona as gunnery practice. And it has advanced our knowledge of explosive shells. For a second there, I thought he was going to complain about me scrapping them and saying, Oh, you, you're giving us too, too few. You know, build some more stuff to replace them before you scrap those. Nope, lucky me, that wasn't the issue. Uh, speaking of, you know, new dreadnoughts, let's look into that. So... The max size I can build is a 57,000 ton behemoth, and it kind of is a behemoth, all things considered, really. 150 rounds of ammo, no torpedo tubes because they're worthless. No, game, I... I want it to be 57,000 tons. I know you don't want it to be 57,000 tons, but I want it to be 57,000 tons. Partly because I'm just kind of curious as to what you come up with right now, really. That's 
actually more so the reason why I'm doing this more than anything else. Okay, so like I said, 150 rounds of ammo. 17 inch guns? I can't quite do 18s. 22 knot speed. Inclined belt, because why not? 13 inch belt armor? Sure. Uh, 2 inches on secondaries, we're fine with that. Uh, that's the highest it can be. Can I get your 23? 24. 5. 26, okay. How can I get you? 25. That allows you to keep up with the constitutions, which is not a bad idea, all things considered. Can I do that? I can. Be there. That, that's fine. 13 inches on the turret is quite a bit, though. Now, I don't think the AI is going to build anything larger than 16-inch guns, realistically speaking. And our 16-inch guns are already good enough for really what we're going to be fighting, I believe. I, I don't see us fighting anything that really will require anything larger than that. Technically, I could slap a 20-inch gun on these things if I adjust everything properly, maybe get rid of the aft superimposed. Um, no, I can't decrease the speed enough to get me there. Hmm. Just out of curiosity, because the game will let me slap a 20-inch gun on this thing. Is there any way I can actually get this to work? If I remove the aft, I can do that. That would be an option. The question just becomes, is it a good option? It does allow you to be able to nose in on the enemy, basically. Because you don't have to worry about broadside. This is, what, like a Dunkirk sort of design where it's all forward firing, but we don't actually have the research yet for all forward, I'm pretty sure. So we don't gain the, bo the bonuses of that, which I believe are weight savings. So we're still basically paying the full weight of doing this sort of design. Pretty sure we don't have that. I think it's under. It's either turrets and gun mounting or all construction. Or no, it's probably ship design actually. Yeah, it's probably ship design. And yeah, I don't see all forward or anything here. We're gonna actually kick ship design up to high because it actually does have useful stuff, it turns out. Shocker, I know. We're going to go ahead also and put some more money into better armor piercing and explosive shells. We're not actually going to build that design. I was just curious as to what it would look like if I tried to build a design right now for a new Dreadnought. Parliament tensions are kind of rising, just so you know. Uh, Germany's going to be told to piss off. <laughs> Why do you do this to me, game? I just... I just sent my shit in for rebuilds and now you give me improved directors. <sighs> well, shit, I need to go ahead and decrease our funds. So, um... How about some more Houstons? 
How many did I build out of curiosity? Just the four? Yeah, just the four. Let's, uh... Let's do six Houstons. And, uh... Double extra money on accelerating those New Mexicos. It's not actually helping. But we're just gonna do it anyway to decrease our monthly balance. We gotta get under... Well, not quite, actually. We're okay right now. Because it's under 700,000. We're at three... 314, we're technically still okay, but we're cutting it a little close, so I kind of want to start decreasing our uh, treasure, or what we have in the our treasury right now. Superimposed armored cruiser turrets. Better depth charges. And it looks like we are over our base cap in the Central Pacific, so improve our bases there because I kind of need... kind of need that stuff to be good to go. Because I'm going to be sending things like the Warringtons there. Along with our uh, new Houstons and the Minneapolises. Um, and two Montanas. This will still put me way over our cap, so I might actually send some of those things to sit on the west coast, actually. Base capacity on the west coast is... quite a bit better, actually, yeah, so... These guys are just going to sit on the west coast, actually, for now. This is still good enough. Um, who's the one complaining about being over? It's the Alabama. You go to the west coast. Technically, I could also go to the North Pacific. What's my stuff there, actually? 70. Uh, yeah, not... Not really good enough to put any sizable force there, so we're not going to bother with that. New Hawkish government. Um, excellent. Better depth charges, and that increased tensions with the Russians and the French. Yeah, tensions are kind of getting high. Not with the people I want them to get it high with, so... We're going to have to figure out a way to deal with that, I think. We still technically over our cap here. We are. It's those damn Corvettes. Speaking of damn Corvettes, you things need rebuilds. I think you guys are getting close. Uh, or no, actually, you're 1922 for these rebuilds. I assume they all actually happened in 1922. So no, it's not going to be an issue until 32, basically. New docks. Coastal batteries finished. More subs done. Japanese want to buy stuff. No thanks. Continue upgrading our dock sizes. There we go. Uh, any new designs here? Nope. Do you want to get a new flying boat? I don't think I do. Maybe I'll try my hand at a new fighter, just to see what you guys got. But I'm not really expecting anything particularly good. Uh, no, I don't really want to raise tensions with the French, to be honest. I, I mean, I could beat them, easily. Because holy crap, the French are weak. But I don't really care to fight them, to be honest. So, it is deplorable that it seems impossible to stop the fighting in this region. We are apparently tantalizingly close to inventing dual-purpose mounting. And that still ro rose tensions with the French, the British, and the Russians, because... Reasons. Me saying, it's a shame we can't stop the fighting there, it pisses them off, apparently. 
Uh, you guys go to the west coast. And South Carolina is complaining about being over capacity again. Nine months left on that stuff. Japanese heavy cruiser. Handle it quietly and discreetly. I don't really care to fight the French. Dual purpose mounting for three and four inch guns. Uh, I don't know what they stole from us technology wise, but I don't really care to fight the Russians. So we're going to try and avoid raising tensions with them. So that is three and four inch guns. Ah, oh, but it's only for single mounts. Damn, I could have sworn... Where is it? Somewhere on here. Um... Where is it? I would have expected it... to have been under AA. But it's not there. Ah, okay. It's under... It's under turrets and gun mountings. For whatever reason, it's not being shown as my most recent research. My most... Ah, because I keep forgetting. This doesn't show your most recent research. This is your highest research. Which for us has improved quad turrets. Which is not what we're looking for. In fact, actually, we still don't have improved um, dual turrets, which is kind of an issue, because that's kind of what's preventing us from doing dual turreted um, stuff for some stuff, some things. So, single threes and fours can be dual mounted, or dual purpose now, which I don't know really if I have anything that has no. All my stuff is... Um... Dual turret, or dual gun 3 and 4s for tertiaries. Which are, you know, kind of what I was planning to use as my dual purpose stuff. So and, and I'd have to send stuff for rebuilds and mess around with other things to get everything back under control to deal with the extra weight. Well, not everything. Apparently the Brooklyns can go through a refit like this without any issue. But the dual purpose, of course, does result in some issues. Now, let's see. What can we do here? Give you the best fire control we can. You complain about... Yeah, I know. I know, game. You've got a problem with the... the dual main guns. And we still haven't quite solved that issue yet. Really nothing I can do about that. Also, the Brooklyns have low free board. I may actually want to get rid of the Brooklyns. They're not really that useful anymore. The Pueblos, I think, are still quite a bit more useful because they have a normal freeboard, yeah. Ah. The Pueblos, though, don't have tertiaries that I can utilize. That. That. There we go. There we go. 13 heavy AA, which is not a whole hell of a lot, but it's still something. Director secondaries, yes. Four months for this on the Fredericks. No. No, that's this is fine. So we're going to go ahead and we'll find a way to get the Brooklyns to work. They're going to require effort. A little more than I would like to give, to be honest. 
Uh, I get 11 with that, so we're going to go for that. Let's see. Uh, you're a heavy cruiser, so no mine sweeping for you. No matter how much you would love to do it. I'm going to rebuild these. I could turn them into single gun mount nines. Question is, do I prefer single gun mount nines or dual sevens? I don't know. I really don't. 6.17. Nine, you get a lot more range. Yeah, we're going to go with that, I think. Can I actually give you any more tertiaries, or were you limited already? You cap out at 30. Which is there. We'll do 10, 20. Okay, so this still gives you a little bit extra leeway. I can up the ammo without increasing the amount of time the rebuild is going to take, which is nice. can also give you a little bit extra speed to 22 knots. If I don't give you the extra ammo... No, I can't quite. Okay. So we're going to have the Brooklyns... I think the Brooklyns are basically going to end up, I think, serving as sort of a kind of early um, AA cruiser type design. Their main job is going to be to sit around the uh, dreadnoughts and um, carriers, things like that. And just provide air coverage. Which then makes the question be why do it this way? way I'm doing it right now. Yeah, see, like I said, adding more, so mixing calibers or uh, sizes for this type of stuff comes with issues. So... Question is, do I keep using them like this? The way I had them previously. Five inch guns are better. Uh, well, better quality, and eventually we'll be able to use five inch dual purpose. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and have the Brooklyns do this. We only have three of them. They're not particularly use, or because we only have three of them, they're not particularly useful. I probably should potentially design a dedicated um, sort of A8 cruiser. Because uh, these Brooklyns, they're just sort of gonna work as a early type version. Eventually, I probably will want a dedicated type design. But they still have their uses, for now at least. So let's go ahead and take advantage of them. Uh, World Cruise. Um, some average ships. Douglas has done a private venture for a fighter, and it's faster. Less range. Less range is, is an immediate no from me. Japan is doing shit in North Korea. Let's push for an international force. Japan ignores it and does their occupation anyway. And tensions decrease with a couple of other countries because, you know, I tried to bring the international community in to stop the Japanese from invading North Korea. 
apparently they decided to skip over South Korea for some reason. I don't think they ever held it. The president wants to try and improve relations with France. I am all for that. It succeeded. They decreased a little bit. Tensions with France are still the highest of any country, so I still would love to deal with that in some way if I can. Make sure our training is being applied. More stuff going down in the Balkans. No, 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 no. I don't want to raise tensions, game. Is there anything? No. Okay. I'll take the prestige hit. There should be a diplomatic solution to the crisis. So, here are our fighter prototypes that they've presented to us. Curtis is presenting a replacement to their seagull. Less range, again. Not by much. Uh, no more firepower, a little bit more maneuverable, a little bit tougher. Yeah, no, I think we're going to stick with the Seagull. Uh, try our hand again. Come on, guys. I said range is the most important, and you, somehow you're screwing this up. Spy from Britain. Uh, handle it quietly and discreetly. Superimposed guns on destroyers. That That's not happening, game. I'm sorry. I'm not putting superimposed turrets on my destroyers. One, because I don't think I can build a destroyer big enough to really benefit from superimposed turrets. I mean, feel free to prove me wrong, and why do you always want to do aft? Why? What is it with you and always wanting to put them in the aft? There is literally no reason to do that. Also, director dual purpose secondaries. Drop the AA. Oh, yeah, can't do director yet. So heavy AA of 5, which is not a lot. Uh, mine sweeping gear is a yes. Increased depth charge storage is also a yes. Is there any way I can make this work? The answer to that would appear to be... Probably not. Never mind. There we go. See? I knew it would work. I say after having said that it would not work. So, technically I can do this. Which is not a terrible design. It's not a great design, but it's not terrible. Destroyers cannot be armored. I do find it annoying that destroyers cannot be armored because, I mean, technically destroyers have had armor historically. If you actually look at any destroyer design, there was armor. It may not have been tons of it, but they had armor, technically speaking. So I could do that. That's an okay design. What can I do with the Warrens here? Is there any way I can get this to work with the Warrens? I'm thinking the answer to that might be no. Um, drop the depth charge storage. I'll keep the mine sweeping gear because that's useful. I sent you, uh, but I don't want to replace machinery because that's eight months, and I don't want to spend eight months waiting. I uh, nope. If I do. And this is what happens when you put too much ammo on your stuff at first, anyway. Now I can't do that. Unex and unit machinery. Wonderful. Unit machinery is basically, well, 
a simple way to describe it would be sort of backup machinery. So it reduces damage from engine hits. So if the engine gets hit, it doesn't hurt as badly. This is obviously most useful for larger stuff that is unlikely to be able to avoid things like, oh, I don't know, say a torpedo. So let's see. You know, a design kind of like this could potentially work. Uh, four inch, thank you. All those, that, that's an okay design. We'll cap out at 18, I think. That's fine. 150 rounds. More tertiary guns. And some more secondaries. 44 is the most you can have. Those have to be in single mounts. Drop them down to 5 inches maybe? No, I'll keep them at 6. Inclined belt. 12 inches of belt armor. Technically I'm increasing my dock size. I think it's 2,500 each. Unless it changes towards the upper end and it becomes uh, something else. Go down to 16, which again, I think is 16s are fine for what I need, realistically. Then I could slap some extra armor on the belt and on the deck. Okay, no more there. Um, I said the belt, but... Let's see. 24... I think I'm gonna go for 25. I like this. I kind of like this design. It takes almost three years to build. But I think it's a good design. Again, I say this as somebody who's not, uh, not great at the game. So this may actually be a terrible design for all I really know. But I think it's a decent design. I don't have my spreadsheet up to compare. And I don't care to go ahead and pause to bring it up or anything, so we're just going to go ahead and say this is a great design, and uh, hope everything works out well. Do I want to go to 17 inch? Doesn't help much, really. The main advantage of 16 to 17 is, what, an extra 5,000 in range? Yeah. So... You know what, I'll wait the four months, and we'll just build the absolutely massive one that we'll be able to build. In the meantime, out of curiosity, what are your Argonauts got? 15 inch guns. And lots of them, holy crap! 14 15 inch guns, I, it, I do not want to mess with the Argonauts here. Bulwark is 816s, that's a more reasonable number. And they're, yeah, they're upgrading their stuff. Oh, really? They got dual purpose fives, that. Screw you guys. I need my dual purpose fives. Uh, we finally figured out effective SIGINT, so... Better pre-battle enemy strength assessment. Colonial crisis for Germany has arisen. I don't know where this is, but... Uh... Oh, this will probably start a war. You know what? It's a little extra reparations. Let's do a quick war with Germany. Or, you know, at least antagonize them. So change of plans guys, we're just gonna stop spying on everybody except for the Italians and the Germans. 
I think we're gonna fight one more war with the Germans real quick, just for some really quick um, reputation, or not reputation, reparations. Uh, and you know what? Maybe I'll actually take Kaicho Bay. Especially if I'm gonna go to war with Japan, because that'll give me a base of operations that I can actually use. It's not the biggest base, at only a base capacity of 30. So I'm gonna be over base capacity with any fleet that will be sent there. But it's something. The president has made ill considerations of uh, the British. Uh, try to explain that the quote was taken out of context. Trying to avoid pissing off the British. Uh, send a battleship. Proved counter flooding. And new fighters. There we go. That Brewster's a little bit better. Bit more speed. Oh shit, but it loses a bunch of. Nope, game. God, you guys suck at this whole. Um. Oh damn, actually, that's quite a bit more than I expected. So, 61,000. I thought it was only like 2,000 each, but evidently I'm very wrong. So, 61,000 ton dis uh, Dreadnought. I was about to say Destroyer. That's a big-ass Destroyer. No, that thing should be in space or something, I imagine. I also was pressing the wrong button there. For doing that quickly. Are you still 20 or 44? Yeah. Hundred fifty rounds, unit machinery, inclined belt, 14 inches of belt armor, or maybe 15. Because, you know, there's no such thing as too much armor. It's technically not true. Not quite able to do that. And I can't go to 17 inch, so you're still stuck at 16, that's fine. Do I want to just take the rate of fire penalty on our secondaries? Because the reality is, with a range of 30,000, our secondaries are unlikely to really be firing very often, if at all. I get those to work. Cause that'd be great if I could. If I do 14 and a half on the belt. Excuse me. If I do 13 and a half on the belt, I can get a speed of 25, which will allow you to keep up with the uh, constitutions, which are an older battle cruiser design, but they're still effective. You will have 12 16 inch guns firing when you broadside an enemy. That's going to hurt them a lot. This will again take almost three years to build, so we won't see these until sometime 1930, basically. Uh, maybe 1931, potentially, even, actually. Okay, can't quite do that. Is there really no way I can do this? Uh, well, actually... Might be able to. Because secondary or light artillery is or AA is a little bit lighter. There we go. 
annoyingly it puts me right at the weight remaining, so I don't have a lot of leeway. This ship will basically have to do a rebuild. Maybe decrease the ammo to 130 each. And then change of plans, because I think I prefer medium AA over light. Not sure if you, it's, you are actually better off with a mixture of them, but yeah. We're going to do that. So we're going to do 140. That gives me 500 weight remaining for any rebuilds in the future. Which, you know, could include things like slapping tertiary or dual mount tertiaries on. Or whatever that ends up being worth. Or even upgrading them to 5 inch guns. Potentially. For even more heavy AA. I, okay. I can just manage to eke out a 14 inch belt. So. 61,000 ton Dreadnought, speed at 25, timer's about to go off, so this is going to be it for this part. So speed at 25 to keep up with the Constitution battle cruisers, 14 inch belt, inclined belt, 5 inches of deck, 13 inch conning tower, 13 inch turrets, 6 inch turret tops, 3 inch secondaries, Build by oil, range of medium, it has unit machinery so that it doesn't basically lose all of its speed every time the engine gets damaged during battle. 12 16 inch guns in triple gun mounts, two mounts on the fore and two mounts in the aft. 140 rounds per three fire control positions with improved directors. Increased elevation, 26 inch secondaries and dual gun mounts. Those do have a rate of fire penalty right now because the game just refuses to give me improved uh, dual gun mounts. And 24 4 inch tertiaries and single gun mounts with dual purpose. No torpedoes because why the hell would I put torpedoes on a uh, dreadnought? A single light AA gun or Presumably a set, so maybe either side of the um, conning tower or something. 33 medium AA, again, presumably sets, so presumably that's a total of 66, I'm guessing. I could be wrong about this, of course. I don't know if that actually is supposed to be sets of guns. And that's going to be it. So this, I think, is a good design, personally. I think it's a good design. It might be absolute horseshit for all I know, because again, I, I'm i not great at this game. I'm still learning a lot of stuff about it as I play. But I think it's a decent design. Um, it's bigger than probably anything the enemy will build, because like I said in the last part, the AI is kind of limited to the, Naval Washington, the Washington Naval Treaty when it comes to its ships, because basically the AI just has templates that already exist and it just uses those templates and those templates are more or less limited to the Washington Naval Treaty. So basically every enemy ship is limited to the Washington Naval Treaty more give or take a little bit. There might be a bit of leeway on that because those are just templates. So our California class here just like California is going to be a really big freaking thing. But it's not going to be the biggest ship that we build, more than likely. Let's go ahead and do this. It'll take four months to do that. Next part, the Germans are probably going to declare war on us. But this should be an easy battle, or an easy war. Because, surprise, surprise, the, the Germans don't really got much. Um, I'm going to actually take two of these Wyomings and move them back up to the east coast. Um, but yeah, so I don't know what we're going to take. We may just go full war reparations actually on the Germans because 
kite show bait just isn't really worth it. It doesn't have enough um, naval or base capacity to be particularly useful in a war against Japan. I think I might be better off just kind of trying to rotate ships in and out of um, being stationed in Northeast Asia. That's maybe what we end up needing to do. Though tensions are kind of high with the uh, British and the French, if we end up in a war with the Germans, British, and French, we're not going to do so hot. Mostly because of the British. The French and Germans I could take together fairly easily. You toss the British in, though, and we're kind of screwed. Um, they're still sort of struggling to get their budget. They went up a little bit, but now they've gone back down. So again, I still have a budget that is absolutely ridiculous compared to everybody else. I don't have all of the dreadnoughts that the British have, however. Um, interestingly, they don't have any CVLs, actually. I noticed that before. They are apparently building one, which is also a little bit weird. It's a rebuild there, and that's an actual build. I'm assuming this is a conversion. And maybe I'm wrong and you don't have to do a conversion to unlock the technology uh, for being able to actually build or design purpose-built CVLs. Because I know I definitely can't design any right now. Or rather I can. Okay, I can't do purpose-built CVs, but I can do purpose-built CVLs. That may be something to look into next part. The purpose-built CVL. We'll see. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, game, for not informing me that I was able to now do purpose-built CVLs. I completely missed that. I don't think the game actually gave me a pop-up for this, but it's possible I just completely missed it. That is that is a possibility, but I don't think so. I honestly think the game did not show me that at all. So, yeah, uh, next part we might do a, design a purpose-built CVL. But until next time, goodbye and farewell.